disproportionation is such a good word and the equation's pretty cool so here are loads of examples for you When working out an equation of disproportionation reaction, we need to start by listing the oxidation states of absolutely everything. If you're not sure how to do this, um, or if you're not sure what redox is, I should just go and watch the videos on that first. So here we have oxygen. That is going to be minus two. It is copper. Um, there are two coppers in the copper oxide, so we need to make sure that the overall contribution from copper is plus two. That means each copper must be plus one times two equals plus two. So this is actually going to be copper one oxide. Slightly off topic there, but still important for you to know. Um, oxygen minus two. Hydrogen plus one times two equals an overall contribution of plus two. Copper on its own here is going to be zero. Oxygen over here is minus two. Hydrogen is plus one. There are two of them giving a total contribution of plus two. Oxygen is minus two. There are four of them giving a total contribution of minus eight. The sulfate ion has a total overall charge of minus two. So the sulfate here needs to be plus six, giving this copper a plus two oxidation state. So if we look at what has changed oxidation states, we have copper here going from one to zero and to plus two. So going from plus one to zero, um, its oxidation state has decreased. That means it is going to have gained electrons. It is going to be reduced. Going from plus one to plus two, it has increased its oxidation state. It has lost electrons. It has been oxidized. So in this equation, this reaction, copper has been reduced and copper has been oxidized, making this a disproportionation reaction because the same thing has been reduced and oxidized. Here we have hydrogen peroxide breaking down into water and oxygen and I'm going to start over this side. Oxygen is going to zero because it's in an element with itself. Um, oxygen in water is minus one. Hydrogen is plus one and there are two of them giving an overall contribution of minus uh, plus two. Now, the hydrogen peroxide, you'll notice this is one of the exceptions to the rules. Um, oxygen in a peroxide is minus one and I've done a separate video explaining why that is in detail. There are two of them so that gives an overall contribution of minus two. Hydrogen is plus one, there are two of them. That gives an overall contribution of plus two. So if we look at what has changed state, oxygen has gone from minus one to minus two and zero. So when it goes from minus one to minus two, it is decreasing its oxidization state. It is gaining electrons, so it has been reduced. When it goes from minus one to zero, it is increasing its oxidation state. It has lost electrons, so it is being oxidized. So oxygen has been reduced and oxygen has been oxidized, so this is a disproportionation reaction. Last example for you here, and again the first thing we need to do is to work out the oxidation states of absolutely everything. Chlorine in a compound with itself is going to be zero. Um, the hydroxide ion as a whole, you should know, has an oxidation state of minus one because the oxidation state is equal to the charge on the ion. And sodium has its charge of its most common ion, so that is going to be plus one. So sodium is going to be plus one, chlorine minus one. Over here, oxygen is minus two. Sodium is plus one, which means the chlorine here must also be plus one. Oxygen is minus two. Hydrogen is plus one, there are two of them, giving an overall contribution of plus two. So if we look at what's changed, chlorine has gone from zero to minus one and plus one. 
When we are going from 0 to minus 1, it is decreases oxidation state. It has gained electrons, so it is being reduced. When it's going from 0 uh, to plus 1, it has increased its oxidation state. It has lost electrons, so it has been oxidised. So in this example, this is the disproportionation reaction because chlorine has been both reduced and oxidised in the same reaction.